A snake where? Ah, oh, that's not a snake. That's a worm. Go get me my fishing rod. We're going to catch some fish. Hi, I'm Joe Alden, MD, also known as Dr. Bones, the disaster doctor of doomandbloom.net, where you'll find over 500 posts on medical preparedness for any disaster. I'm also the co-author, along with the fabulous nurse Amy, of the number one Amazon bestseller in survival skills and safety first aid, the Survival Medicine Handbook, and designer of the upcoming board game, Doom and Bloom Survival, a great off-grid option to get the whole family involved in the survival mindset. This is America's favorite squawker, T.D. Bird, and this scaredy cat doesn't need any introduction. In a grid down scenario, you'll find yourself out in the woods a lot more frequently, gathering firewood, hunting, and foraging for edible wild plants. As such, you'll probably encounter a snake or two. Most snakes aren't poisonous, but even non-venomous snake bites have potential for infection. Venoms and poisons are not the same thing. Poisons are absorbed by the skin or digestive system, but venoms must enter the tissues or the blood directly. Therefore, it's usually not dangerous to drink snake venom unless you have, say, a cut on the inside of your mouth. Don't try it though. North America has two kinds of venomous snakes, the pit vipers, rattlesnakes and others, the elipids, coral snakes. One or more of these snakes can be found in almost everywhere in the continental U.S. A member of another viper family, the common adder, is the only venomous snake in Britain, but it and other adders are common throughout Europe, except for Ireland, thanks to St. Patrick, or so the legend goes. Venomous snakes generally have hollow fangs through which they deliver venom. Snakes are most active during the warmer months and therefore you can expect most bite injuries to occur then. Not every bite from a venomous snake though transfers its poison to the victim. 25 to 30 percent of bites are what we call dry. This probably has to do with the duration of time that the snake has its fangs in the victim. An ounce of prevention, they say, is worth a pound of cure. Be sure to wear good solid high top boots and long pants when hiking in the wilderness. Treading heavily creates ground vibrations and noise which will often cause snakes to hit the road. Snakes have no outer ear so they hear ground vibrations better than those in the air caused by shouting. Many snakes are active at night, especially in warm weather. Therefore, some activities of daily survival, such as gathering firewood, are a bad idea at night without a good light source. In the wilderness or even in your own backyard, it's important to look where you're putting your hands and feet. Be especially careful around areas where snakes might like to hide, such as hollow logs, under rocks, or in old shelters. Wear heavy gloves if you are reaching into areas like this. A snake doesn't always slither away after it bites you. It's likely it still has more venom than it can inject. So move out of its territory or abolish the threat in any way you can. Now killing the snake, however, may not render it harmless. It can reflexively bite for a period of time, even if its head has been severed from its body. Snake bites that cause a burning pain immediately are likely to have venom in them. Swelling at the site may begin as soon as five minutes afterwards and can travel up the affected area. Pit viper bites tend to cause bruising and blisters at the site of the wound. Numbness may be noted in the area bitten or perhaps on the lips or face. Some victims describe a metallic or other weird taste in their mouths. With pit vipers, bruising is not uncommon and a serious bite might start to cause spontaneous bleeding even from the nose or gums. Coral snake bites, however, they'll cause mental and nerve issues such as twitching, confusion, and slurred speech. Later, nerve damage can cause difficulty with swallowing and even breathing, followed by total paralysis in the worst cases. Coral snakes appear very similar to their look-alike, the non-venomous king snake. They both have red, yellow, and black bands and are commonly confused with each other. The old saying goes, red touches yellow, kill a fellow. Red touches black, venom it lacks. This adage only applies to coral snakes in North America, however. Coral snakes are not as aggressive as pit vipers and will prefer fleeing to attacking. Once they bite you, however, they tend to hold on. Pit vipers prefer to bite and let go quickly. Unlike coral snakes, though, pit vipers may not relinquish their territory to you, so prepare to possibly be bitten again. The treatment for a venomous snake bite is called antivenom. It's an animal or human serum product capable of neutralizing a 
specific biologic toxin. This product, however, will probably be unavailable in a long-term survival situation. So what can you do? Keep the victim calm. Stress increases blood flow, thereby endangering the patient by speeding the venom into the system. Stop all movement of the injured extremity. Movement will move the venom into the circulation faster, so keep the limbs still. Clean the wound thoroughly to remove any venom that isn't deep in the wound. Remove rings and bracelets from an affected extremity because swelling is likely to occur. Position the extremity below the level of the heart. This slows the transport of venom. You would wrap with compression bandages as you would an orthopedic injury, but continue it further up the limb than you might usually. Bandaging begins two to four inches above the bite, let's say towards the heart in other words, winding around and moving up then back down over the bite and past it towards the hand or foot. Keep the wrapping about as tight as when you're dressing a sprained ankle. If it's too tight, the patient will reflexively move the limb because they're uncomfortable and spread the venom. Don't use tourniquets if you can at all because it does a lot more harm than good. Draw a circle if possible around the affected area. As time progresses, you will see improvement or worsening at the site much more clearly. This is a useful strategy, by the way, to follow any local reaction or infection. The limb should then be rested and then perhaps immobilized with a splint or a sling. The less movement there is, the better. Keep your patient on bed rest with the bite site lower than the heart for 24 to 48 hours. By the way, this strategy also works for bites from venomous lizards like Gila monsters. It's no longer recommended to make an incision and try to suck out the venom with your mouth. If it's done more than three minutes after the actual bite, it would remove perhaps one one thousandth of a venom and could cause damage or infection to the bitten area. A Sawyer extractor, a syringe with a suction cup, is more modern but is also fairly ineffective in eliminating more than a small amount of the venom. These methods fail mostly because of the speed at which the venom is absorbed. Interestingly, snake bites cause less infections than bites from, say, cats, dogs, or humans. As such, antibiotics are needed less often in these cases. So look before you leap because you might just leap into a snake pit. This is Joe Alden, MD, wishing you the best of health in good times or bad. Don't forget to check out our board game, Doom and Bloom Survival, at www.survivalboardgame.com. And our entire line of books, DVDs, medical supplies, and medical kits, including Nurse Amy's brand new gunshot wound kit, at store.doomandbloom.net.